दीप जले और जागा ये मन दीप जले और जागा ये मन मोरा जो बनाना वेला पुरुष जब स्त्री के बारे में लिखता है तो अनुमान से लिखता है स्त्री जब स्त्री के बारे में लिखती है तो अनुभव से लिखती है ये अनुभव और अनुमान का फर्क हमेशा रहेगा इट हैज मेंट डीप कॉन्सुलेशन नोइंग दैट समवन हैज बीन हियर बिफोर जस्ट नोइंग दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर एक्सपीरियंस और साइकोलॉजिकल और कल्चरल कंडीशन दैट आई एम एक्सपीरियंसिंग नाउ हैज हैपेंड बिफोर Uh, whereas you know there was any number of histories of the left movement peasant movement such like nobody had thought of the women's movement i was working in publishing at the time and i tried to talk to my bosses who were all very nice people ask them if they why we don't do books by women and they didn't even think that there was anything there to write about for a man um his wife is someone who is not going to leave very easily especially if she doesn't wander off into jungle parks or read the wrong literature if you don't understand how women have lived and how they reflect upon their lives how will you make policies for women how will you understand what they need in the contemporary society kitab hijra nadar maja na le hu ka hai लगाए जतियां मरा जो बना नवे लरा माए मुरा जो बना नवे लरा माए the first mention of uh, women per se in any capacity to be uh, regarded as literate appears in the rigved when they mention there are 10 verses dedicated to a lady called maitri who is the wife of a, of the sage yagnavalka and there is also gargi who is who is celebrated as a very well established philosopher the first women's anthology is actually attributed to the to buddhist monks in between the uh, late 6th century early 7th century and by the time buddha makes his appearance in 623 you've had a lot of women who come into the fold of the buddha sanghas because they offered freedom one of the early texts that we have is the verses composed by bikku monks and and by bikkuni uh, nuns and they are called ther theragatha and therigatha uh, they they are modeled on the similar pattern that is the men's verses are codified under theragatha and the women's voices are codified under this text called therigatha and if you make a comparison you'll actually see that the things that men talk about are very different from the things that women talk about in their verses so uh, what women seem to talk about is quite a lot based on experiences and e- experiences of all kinds including this search for uh, the higher self there's this very interesting account in which the tempter mara comes to a woman who's seated under a tree and is uh, a bhikkhuni who's seated under a tree and she's she's meditating and this guy says to her what are you doing sitting under this tree and meditating all you need is two finger consciousness and what is two finger consciousness it's the ability to put your hand in a pot of rice that is cooking take out the rice and test whether it's cooked or not so it's called two finger <laughs> it's been translated as two finger consciousness and she responds back saying what do i want to do with two finger consciousness i seek okasha space uh, the the sky is uh, you know what you might describe as the extended self hai re hai re hai buti bala ka 
की कान छुपी हरे हरे हाय भूति भला कति कान छुपी हरे हरे हाय भूति भला कति कान द फर्स्ट वर्क्स दैट कम आउट अदर देन द द नन्स ऑफ कोर्स are the usual women it's there's no difference in how women talk and behave so the first uh, works that come out are women dissing their husbands talking about uh, their mothers in law and how terrible they are and how badly treated they are household drudgery how much they have to walk for water how much they have to cook and sexual slavery and this entire um, angst that they have actually repressed and held within them for many centuries women sang these songs while well, they cut paddy as they do in tamil nadu even today it's also how they uh, how they wrote in a way because they created those verses as they worked mehuri ni uri danda tuti re buti bhala kati kan chuti mehuri ni uri danda vid हा करे पुराणे गर्जती स्त्रीये संगती हित नो सहज स्त्रीयचाची देह परमार्थाची सोय आता कैची भक्ति अगेन इज एन एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ फ्रीडम ऑफ सीकिंग वन्स ओन पर्सनल आयडिया ऑफ गॉड it actually broke the caste barriers that you didn't need to have a purohit you didn't have to have a brahman i didn't have to pay him money the bhakti movement saw a lot of women because uh, being in the house i could seek there was there was freedom to seek divinity i think there is definitely a difference between the women poets you know the mystic poets and the men this i have certainly you pick it up each of them are quite individual obviously the timbers are very different but there is definitely a difference and to my mind it's for instance just the abandon of meera you know i don't think any other poet comes close to that you know that kind of ecstatic abandon or um, the capacity for despair you know so despair and union those extremes the kind of voltage of meera no one comes close to hare piv ki ba across india she is very well known without knowing it we often have her language on our tongue even today you will find verses in rajasthan which say which tell you very clearly that uh, she is a disgrace a stain upon the community you think of her she is someone who from a very early age knew her mind she was forced to get married it would appear this is the story that we we are all told and there are other kinds of myths that are that, that float around but once she decides in her mind i'm talking about this mythological one meera then she is completely focused on shri krishna the love of her life so when you mention the word determined how else can you justify what she is doing excepting that she is one hell of a determined woman and the saddest part is that we have forgotten that she is a rebel it used to rain pearls the fresh waters used to gush through the fields the fields watered thus would rustle with chamba grain 
of all this wealth of fields and grain, I was the mistress. Then my lord was taken away from me, a short while ago. And now, for a fistful of rice, I am famine-stricken. The 19th century sort of um, privileged the women's question over every other question. So in some way, I think the 19th century man uh, began to feel the oppressiveness of that system because there were widows in everybody's family. I have seen my house. My mother was 22 years old in the village. She was the king of the English. My mother said to her father, कि दादाजी मैं पढ़ना चाहती हूँ गांव से स्कूल था कई कोस दूर और वहाँ जाऊँगी पढ़ने तो मेरे बाबा ने तो मना नहीं किया बल्कि उनका मजाक उड़ाया गया पूरे समाज में बाबा का कि इनकी बहू पढ़ने जाती है माताजी को कहा गया है पागल औरत पढ़ने जाती है फर्स्ट सीरियस अकाउंट इज एक्चुअली पंडितारामाबाई polemic on Sri Purush Tulna, in which actually the widow is the trigger for her writing. So actually, the print revolution gives women the capacity to enter the public sphere on their own terms. You, you push yourself into the public sphere in, at a moment when the public sphere is not actually willing to include you. So there's this big debate around uh, the age of marriage and the age of consent being raised. And there's Dayaram Gidumal in Western India who sends out a questionnaire to everybody. He doesn't send a single questionnaire to a woman. It's the reform is about women. No woman uh, is allowed to enter the debate. So it's quite extraordinary. So at that time, people write letters to the newspaper. That's one way they get into the public sphere. From the 30s onwards, there are literary movements and women are very much a part of it. So there's Rashid Jahan, for instance. There's um, Kurutul Haider, there's uh, Ismat Chuktai. So for a long time, women wrote in the male voice. Earlier, when men wrote about women, it was, you know, showing their weakness and they're all very, uh, how they have to be looked after and rescued and so on. You know, all the fairy stories are about that. But when people like uh, uh, Rashid Jahan all started writing, then they were very combative women and who stood up and said what's what and so on. People like Isma Chuktai and all were writing in a few, and people held that against her in the beginning, that she was only writing about the world of women. And they thought it was not a big enough project for her to be considered a major writer. Kuratulen Heder, as you know, is a very is a cult figure in Urdu literature. Of course, with her Al Qadariya, she became an international figure. She talks about singers of Lucknow. She talks about art. She talks about temples. She talks about mosques. She talks about dancing girls. If you've read Al Qadariya, it talks, there are, there are characters in Al Qadariya belong to the Hindu tradition, the old Hindu tradition, the old Buddhist tradition, Islam and Christianity. In a way, they represented the Indian culture. The book culminates, this novel culminates at partition. And this pain which the writer has been living, this nausea, is, comes through this Agkadarya. Aj akhaan waar sishanu ki to kabran vichyo bol Aj kitab e ishq da koi agla var ka pol Akhaan waar sishanu ki to kabran vichyo bol Aj kitab e ishq da koi agla var ka pol I mean it's now clear that the rape and abduction of women happened on a mass scale. We know from statistics of different organizations that at least 100,000 women were abducted, possibly raped, impregnated by men of the other religion, uh, sometimes raped by men of their own religion because they don't magically become better at, at moments like this. And many were killed by their own families in order to ostensibly save them from 
possible ray. Uh, these histories were not talked about much, uh, partly because I think for the men of the different communities, the rape of their women within courts is seen as a kind of failure on their part to protect their women. Then this is really the dark side of independence. Violence was not the only thing that happened to women at partition. You know, there were so many ways in which their lives changed. In fact, one of the women I talked to even said, you know, it was a moment when I spread my wings. Immediately after uh, independence, I mean, we grew up in those decades after uh, independence. The main advice to women was uh, uh, to really be good mothers and good women citizens. Right? One of the ways of being good uh, women citizens was to take care of the house. And many of us protested against that. We felt that now that the women have come out, why should they go back <laughs> into the house? Under what circumstances does a woman start writing? Like uh, some time back, I was uh, abroad and somebody on the stage asked me, that a male writer had come from India uh, some time back and they had asked him, how do stories come to you? And he said that I wake up every morning and I open the window and stories come flying to me like birds, you know. So they asked me, um, what do you think about it? I told them it's a wonderful metaphor to say that uh, stories come like birds flying. I said, but the thing is that one should have a window to open. That's one thing. Another thing is that the family must allow the woman to stand by the window, open it and wait for these stories to come. क्या होता है गाँव में कि जिस घर में पुरुष नहीं होता उसकी ज़मीन को हड़पने को आ जाते हैं बहुत लोग स्त्री होती है खाली तो उससे कहते हैं कि तुझसे हम शादी कर लेंगे और वो जान जाते हैं जब ये आ जाएगी तो ज़मीन साथ आएगी और स्त्री जो है शादी की इतनी वो होती है बेचारी को इतना परेशान कर दिया जाता है बिना शादीशुदा स्त्री जो होती है विधवा हो जाए या अपरसिकता हो उसके लिए मुश्किल हो जाती है तो वो सब पूरी कहानी मैंने इधर नमाम करके इधर नमाम मीन्स कि ये मेरा नहीं है ये मेरे लिए नहीं है है ना इधर नमाम से भी पहले मैं कबूतराओं पर लिखना चाहती थी वहाँ कबूतरियाँ जो हैं उन पर क्या उनके पास कोई खेती नहीं है कबूतराओं के पास कोई नौकरी नहीं देता उन्हें कोई ए, 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 जो मजदूरी है वो नहीं कि नहीं तुम चोर हो कबूतरे तो ज़्यादातर जंगल में रहेंगे जेल में और कबूतरियाँ जो हैं आम रास्ता चल नहीं सकती किसान के खेत में मैड से भी निकलने जिन किसानों की रहम में मैं मरी जाती हूँ वही किसान अगर कबूतरी निकल रही है कबूतरा की पत्नी बेटी बहन जो भी निकल रही है उससे तो भी उससे सेक्स की डिमांड की जाएगी When I was in college, we read Dopti by Mahashweta Devi. It was also when I read Sultana's Dream. You know, I, I found Sultana's Dream charming. It was charming because I think wit and humor have mattered to women so much, and the ability to turn 
turn the table, to be able to look at it the other way. Um, why not tame men, you know? Um, the, the lion is tamed by the lion tamer. I mean, there's no question of strength being a rationale for why women should stay home, and, and nor is it a rationale for why men should not stay home. So, uh, you know, I, I was charmed by it. But what really um, affected me in the sense of like um, sea change or r radical uprooting kind of change, rethinking, putting down new roots and, and forming new ideas was when I read um, the, uh, Mashweta Devi's work. This particular work, because I think Devi's identification of the character Dopti, both historically in the Dropadi story and in the contemporary story of tribal women and their plight, and the way in which all women are ex are, are um, um, have to live with the fear of of assault, of of uh, having their autonomy um, taken from them. She is writing from the dailiness of whatever she stands for. And yet it's not a kind of didactic, message-bearing, uh, uh, position-taking, position-taking in the sense that yes, her writing does posit itself as a kind of um, resistance. It is, I mean, uh, a literature of resistance if you want to label it. She uses the phrase, body pele devo, you know, like, I shall throw my body into the fray. And she says it casually, but she means it, and she has done this. I think there was um, uh, both a story and a real-life situation where in the real life the protagonist actually was beaten to death, but no marks on his body because the police had supposedly wrapped him in a blanket. Uh, and the family managed to, especially the wife, managed to actually, quote-unquote, steal the body. And uh, the police had no clue. They were desperately trying to find uh, the body, while well, this woman protected the body for some three, four weeks uh, till she was ready to file the case. Um, she actually made a bed and, and the body was beneath the bed, you know, on a sort of wooden platform. And so symbolically, it's a very dramatic, theatrical, all kinds of imagery comes into mind visually and otherwise. Uh, the idea of her sleeping on her husband's corpse in a sense concealing it, um, saving it as the only proof to produce before a court to say this is what actually happened. So in that sense, and this is, you know, and uh, again, I don't remember the story, but it appears exactly like that in a story that she wrote. So this is, a, as you know, um, the book about the life of a domestic worker. Poor baby, what else could one say of her? Imagine a childhood so brief, so ephemeral, that you could sit down and the whole thing could unravel in front of you in barely half an hour. And yet, her childhood fascinates baby. Perhaps everyone is fascinated by the things they've been deprived of, the things they long for. Baby remembers her childhood. She savors every moment of it. She licks it just as a cow would her newborn calf, tasting every part. And to me, this is the most beautiful passage in this book. It's a passage where this young woman who does not know how to write turns into a writer. If you look at women's writing, let's say over the last um, 40 years, perhaps longer, the sorts of things they're writing about and the sorts of women who are writing. Dalit women are writing now. You see women like uh, women who are not writers, but who feel they have something to say, like Baby Haldar, the domestic worker, like Salma, the panchayat leader, like Shanti, the driver who's learning how to drive a taxi, you know, or like uh, Revati, the hijra, the transgender person who's writing about her life. Now, all of these kinds of writings would not have entered the canon of literature earlier. Dalit woman from Kutch, oh. and she uh, has for years been drawing the women's movement. This is her self-portrait. She's called Radha Ben Garve. Here they are going off to the collector, complaining and asking protesting. him, for, yeah, protesting. 
yeah. protesting patriarchy. So here she goes to her first uh, international conference. She has to go out of the village. She gets an auto and the driver is driving like a maniac. So she's clutching on to the top thing, you know. And then she reaches there and she's in a plane. Oh. <laughs> and that's a plane. So she gets to the place and then she goes up in a lift. <laughs> I see a lot of stories here and many of my stories from the first collection um, that I put out um, are in this park and the park is referenced and that there's a story with the Pujari and his daughter and that's from this park. People in the colony are aware so periodically I'm taken aside and I'm told nay mat karo ye nahi karna chahiye this will happen to you that will happen to you and you know no one will say what will happen to me um it would be impolite for me to say to the man who's saying don't walk in the park it would be impolite for me to say why not what will happen to me i think the extension of the answer that he would have to give is that you know he or his ilk would be willing to stop me i mean this nice polite invitation to not walk in the park can be extended all the way out to its inevitable conclusion that i will be prevented from walking and that there will be violence involved in the prevention samman hum istri ko samman dete hain ab ye bhi nara dekhti hogi ye bhi galat hai सम्मान नहीं हमें समानता चाहिए सम्मान तो तुम एक दिन दे दोगे सम्मान के रोज रोज दिया जाता है किसी को सम्मानित करते हैं तो एक ही दिन भैया लोग शाल ले जाओ फूल ले जाओ पैसे ले जाओ हैं रोज रोज तो देते हैं लेकिन समानता आपको रोज देनी पड़ेगी बहुत महंगी है जिसकी आदत नहीं आपको This time we didn't circle each other the city and I hackles raised fur bristling this time there was space between us and we weren't competing space enough and more for the nose digging librarian and her stainless steel tiffin box for the little theater peon to read me endless marathi poems on rainy afternoons My relationship with the city has been a very uh, a very good one I think I mean 